Hey everybody, it's Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Uh, we do have an update. Picked up by NOAA now. We have three tropical, well not tropical, but disturbances. Uh, one has 20% chance it's going to be Tropical Storm Zeta. I'll show you that. Then we have the uh, Disturbance 1, which is the Invest 93L. That's not doing much. It's going to break it apart into two energies, and it's actually going to contribute to Disturbance 3, which has 20%, which is going to be our Hurricane Epsilon, guys. And I will show, show you everything. Let me read this real quick. This is the first one that we have up. Disturbance 2. It has 20% chance of cyclone formation in five days as of 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock Central on October 14th today. A broad, non-tropical, non low-pressure system is expected to form over the weekend, several hundred miles southeast of Bermuda. Uh, some slow development will be possible thereafter into early next week while the system moves southwestward and then westward, passing about midway between Bermuda and the northern Lesser Antilles. Then you have Disturbance 1. I'm not even going to read this, guys. It's 93L. Pause it if you want to read it. This is very bad. Then the, the one that's going to be Epsilon, the one I've been showing you, it has a 20% chance. It is Disturbance 3. Uh, a broad area of low pressure could form by early next week over the southwestern Caribbean Sea. Uh, some gradual development of the system will be possible thereafter while it moves slowly west to northwestward. And that's what we have from them. Now let me get you to all the information so I can show you everything that I have set up for you. Cause I have everything you need to see, guys. Now on GFS, it shows the, the Hurricane Epsilon coming into formation. Euro I actually have for you, showing you uh, parts of Tropical Storm Zeta. And I will show you that as well on the model. Uh, it, it does get up to about 50, almost 60 miles per hour. Now this is on our 120 now, guys. So it is moving a lot closer. This is your GFS. This is the system forming up and being recognized here. It's actually picked up a little sooner, but it, it goes back and forth. This little piece of energy came across from 93L by then. 93L is going to split up. One piece of energy is going to head towards Bahamas. One piece of energy is going to head towards, uh, towards where it's going to form on, on Epsilon. Now, as we go through the models, I'm going to go through it for you so you can see the formation of it. You can see this come into it, and you can see the buildup of what the track is. It is somewhat the same from this morning, but it has shifted more west and it has gotten more intense. Now you see how it goes up and down on the models and it's hard to pick it up a lot. It's trying to get the little circulation going together with the piece that came from 93L. Then when you get to the 168, it has a good formation. It starts doing good storms right over uh, Jamaica. So, so Jamaica, I do show that you will have only tropical depression to tropical storm at best conditions still so you're still okay i'm not showing the crazy models like we had the other day so far now here it is on a 22nd this is a thursday it gets tropical depression tropical storm i'll show you that and then when it gets into friday friday is when it gets a little stronger this is friday the 23rd and it gets uh, almost a hurricane strength immediately before it goes over cuba so it still has that rapid intensification that we did see earlier 977 then it decides to move forward at 969 on the 24th and it drops all the way to 958 guys i mean immediately you have a good center of formation with this with this eye and then it moves over towards cuba it goes down to 953 it weakens some but it's still a powerful hurricane at this point this is the 24th which is a saturday then it weakens some more. Then it moves towards Florida. So it looks like the interaction with Cuba did pull it a little more west. Now that's the only factor that I was not thinking that maybe the land would pull it west knowing all the currents was pushing east. But it looks like it did track a little more west, aiming kind of for the tip of Miami, uh, also the Keys. Now it's down to 962. This is the 25th. It is a Sunday. This is your 6Z. And if you remember the millibars here, Okay, let me show you this in a minute. Let me show you the intensity that I did pick up on that run. Uh, real quick, this is the Euro model. This is your Invest, uh, well, not 93L. It's going to be 94L or 95L, whichever one gets the numbers first. But it's showing that 174 hours away on the Euro model, that this low pressure starts getting picked up and it moves westward towards the northern Bahamas and towards the, the coast of the East Coast. Now, it looks like it misses the northern Bahamas for the most part. Uh, GFS actually picks this up later, uh, and it does show that it does get the tropical storm strength. So how soon that forms, 
We got to wait and see. But this is what we have. This is the 24th. And there's your 12Z for the 24th. This is the last shot we got for the Euro model. And it looks like it's just heading straight for Georgia and it's going to twirl. Question is, is there is there going to be any moisture or anything going on there? Because this is going to head north, get sucked out by the jet stream that we have covering over uh, North USA, thank God. And then uh, Epsilon's going to come up behind it. So this could be Epsilon if this forms first. Depends which one it is. And Zeta could be the major hurricane. So we got to wait and see on that one. Now I got another one I want to show you. This one is going to be for the what you have all together when you can see the formation. This is in the center of the Atlantic. And if you watch, this is all the way 36 hours away. 36 hours away, you're going to see this, this, this pressure come and go and just try and form up. It's just sitting there spinning. I'll, I'll show you this on WSV3. We're on the 18th already. It's just sitting there spinning, gathering strength. Uh, and by then, you see the low pressure start forming down here where this Epsilon or Zeta, whichever one's going to be first, it looks like so far uh, it's going to be Epsilon. Then you got both pressures at the same time. So they both start meeting up together. Then the one that is in the Atlantic Ocean starts moving more southerly. And this is on GFS. This is why I tell you GFS loses it after a minute. Then it starts when it starts heading west, GFS loses its strength as, as Epsilon down here starts gaining strength on the beginning of the run that we showed. And then it just disappears. It gets off radar. It gets higher than 1,013 millibars. It's not getting picked up at this point. But Epsilon is still coming. Now let me show you the impacts. Because the impacts we need to go over. This is the shot that we have okay, from the hurricane as it moves over Cuba and goes over Bahamas. This is a tip shot down here on the tip of Florida. This is on the 25th. This is on the 2.52 hour run. This is a 6Z. This is early. There will be a lot of storms. And as it moves by, it gets all the way down to 9.50. And that's why I wanted to bring the point to you. Now, the millibar chart, when we go to the millibar chart, it, when you get to the 950, you are talking two millibars away from a Cat 4. So this is going to be a strong Cat 3 passing through uh, the tip of Florida, which is not a good thing. And you got to remember, this is all spinning counterclockwise. So all this flooding, all this surge, all this wind, all this extra is just beating on the on the east side of Florida then it goes down to 948 literally one millibar away from a cat 4 as it moves up the coast here it is down here on the same shot this is on a 26 it's a Monday and it goes back to 950 and if you notice all in the Northeast we just had a front push through this is the edge of it here with with the cold temperatures right you just had a little bit of snow. Now, this is going to cause even more snowfall. Look how heavy the snowfall are in these states. And then it's going to drag even more and do it like a nor'easter effect. And just drop snow. This, this pink and red here, this is freezing rain. And another thing you got to remember when you're looking at these models, that the, the rotation of this storm is all going to be counterclockwise. Cat 3 hurricane right in the northeast. So this is not a good thing. I hope that this does change but this is the updated information that we have so far now here it is right here on the east coast if you want to get a big shot of everything and see how much it's really going to affect it's going to affect the whole east coast here with surge uh, it's going to also affect it with uh, flooding on the on the edge of the the coastal waters plus the storms and the rain bands that's going to whip around this is really going to be a problem this is on the 26th this is a monday and as it moves up, it stays 950. It stays a strong Cat 3 hurricane on the edge of Cat 4. I think it could be a Cat 4. It gets down to 949. So that's that's already close enough. It all depends on what happens with Zeta, if it takes all the moisture or if it leaves it. But you can see the dip in the cold temperatures right here. And this moisture just meets up with it perfectly and causes your nor'easter effect. So it's going to be a lot of snowfall for some of you guys out there. And there's the freezing rain and the sleet. And it's going to be out on the 27th and it'll be gone. It is going to leave the snow and its effects with it. Now, if you follow the run with the impacts of the winds, this is where you can see where really who's going to get what. This is the 21st. This is 168 hours away and you're already going to have tropical depression uh, winds over Jamaica. This is on a Thursday. 
And then when it gets to the 23rd, right there, it's a Friday, it's going to move towards tropical storm conditions for western Jamaica. Also possible for the, for the Cayman Islands as well, so be aware for that. But now it sits there and it builds strength a little bit. It does a little wobble, if you remember the wobble from this morning. And it looks like it's a little worse uh, towards, towards the islands uh, west of, of Jamaica because it starts getting to strong tropical storm strength. And that's actually, it's 977 is hurricane. So 980 would be a hurricane. There you go. It's 68 knots. 65 knots plus is hurricane. Then it gets down to 969 on 23rd. Winds keep whipping 958. It gets down to 953. And this is a powerful system. 90 knots. This is a very powerful system. And the winds are powerful in all directions I'm showing. 958 over Cuba. That's the Cat 3 hurricane over you, Cuba. Be aware, please. Gets down to 962. Goes towards the Florida Keys. Starts getting tropical storm conditions real strong. Uh, possible edge of hurricane conditions as it heads towards uh, southern Miami. Or so, so, southern Florida in general. Uh, southern Florida, I see there's the same shot down here. That you will be getting tropical storm conditions probably well into Miami from this storm. But the worst part is going to be on Sunday, the 25th. It gets down to 950. That's two millibars from a Cat 4 hurricane right off your coast. So just be aware of that. And if Cuba pulls this a little more westerly, this could be even more of a problem. Okay. Now we have 88 knots. Eighty-six, ninety knots. I mean, this thing's powerful. This thing's very powerful. Ninety knots. If you want to put that in miles per hour, you divide six and put it into it, and it goes in fifteen times. That's one hundred and five miles per hour. That's that's some sharp winds. Gets all the way down to nine forty-nine as it moves by the coast. So it looks like the moisture is going to be there. Ninety-three knots. Ninety-four knots. Ninety-three, I think, is what I saw. And this is on a twenty-six a Monday. Okay. Now here it is on the, on the 26th of the Monday. It's the 18 Z's late at night. It's going to be bad storms. It's going to be another night hurricane, guys. And it's just winds going to be whipping. 92 knots, I saw. We'll say 90. Sorry about that. 95 knots, guys. So it's, it gets stronger. It literally gets stronger. If that gets up to 111 with 95 knots, that's literally a cat four. Then it goes up to the northeast, and it, and it leaves out. Now, to show it to you uh, on the WSV3, I can show you everything I'm talking about. This right here is the 93L. This is what we're dealing with with the 93L. This is wind gust. Okay. This is the now. And then up here is the formation of the disturbance number two. This is going to be tropical storm Zeta. And you can see how uh, 93L breaks up into two energies. Okay, and this one travels towards Epsilon. It helps out the, the circulation that it's trying to do in this, the Central American uh, uh, jar. And then this piece comes up, and we really don't know if this helps contribute with tr disturbance to or if it just disappears all in general. And as we go forward, you can see disturbance 2 starts wounding up. This starts heading towards uh, Epsilon and starts getting together with it and they get an energy together they both kind of twist up at the same time see that we're going to have tropical storm zeta and this will be tropical storm this is in the 40s already and this is already in the 50s and we're going to have hurricane epsilon at the same time and right here you got the north carolina line right here it's always for this edge I'm showing 49 and already, let's see, 70 something. We'll just say 73, that's fine. It's almost hurricane. But we got two storms at the same time, guys. This is on the 23rd at 5 o'clock in the morning. So let's keep this in mind. It's going to be another morning. Let me slow this down for you. It's going to be another midnight run. So that's altogether terrible as well. And as I play it, you'll see exactly what happens with these two storms. I'll rewind it so y'all can see what happens with Epsilon in just a second. And then it gets all the way up when it gets towards the north. 
gets a hurricane. Hurricane Epsilon is what it shows it gets up to. And by then, uh, this one, Hurricane Zeta, sorry. This one's already 109 miles per hour. And you got the one over, over the northeast as well. So we're going to have this at the same time. And we're really going to figure out how to, how to deal with this. Now, Zeta leaves. So does the winds and all the problems. Leaves the snow. Depends on the temperatures. I didn't, I didn't check that far and see what happens. Let me back up Epsilon so we can see what's going on. We have a lot of people that's in this path. All right, there you are, Jamaica, Cuba. Now, this is the wind gust. And I'll show you impacts real quick next. Now, this is on the 21st. This is not very far away. This is at 7 p.m., and it will be a tropical depression at that point. Jamaica so keep your mind your, your your mind on that and then it starts strengthening when you get that black right there the midnight of that night is going to be a tropical storm so this thing is really ramping up and ready to go now this is where you can't see uh, some of the islands but you know where you're at if you live there it's, you can see through these, these colors you can see about where you're at but this thing gets real strong over Cuba it's a lot of cloud cover. I mean, everywhere there's winds everywhere. And then as it goes over Cuba and heads towards the Bahamas, it's 107, 108, 109 Cuba. Just so you know, it's a very powerful wind's going to move over you. And that's on the 24th, the night of the 23rd. Then it heads towards western Bahamas and on the edge of Florida. That's the most intensity right there that I see. That's a big system. We have 101. 101 miles per hour gust winds. And just so you know, uh, these over here is tropical storm conditions, uh, Florida. And the red is 50s. The pink is 60s. The purple is 70s. Okay. Okay. And it's going to move through. This is the 25th early in the morning. Tropical storm conditions are going to consist. Golly, I think it's real strong. Must be some really good breathing up there on the, on the, on the echo tops. I bet that would be quite a shot. And it looks like it just carries over. This is the way we saw earlier with the, uh, the rainfall. And here's your speeds that you have. Tropical storm conditions for all this orange. Tropical depression to high 20s for the green. 50s for the red, 60s for the pink. Like it hits the edge. If you get the purple, it's 70s and 80s in the blue, you get the point. Look like 109 wind gusts. Wind gusts of 109 so far. And that goes for you as well, Bahamas. That's going to be right over you or right next to you or right over you as well. Okay, it, got, it gets even stronger because of the circulation rotation that's over the Bahamas. This is almost at midnight again. This is on the 25th. And it's maxed out at 109 for the whole area, which don't even make sense. But that's what it, it shows for now. And then as it goes up the coast, it heads towards, it got even brighter, you saw that? It heads towards the Carolina's edge. It gets real powerful. That, and a bit, yep, maxed out at 109. So this it's well beyond that. It's just a computer's not, uh, <laughs> it's not putting in the information. We have this problem lots of times. Sometimes it gets maxed out at 120. But that's what it shows is a max for 109. This is on the 26th at 1 p.m. Then it moves up and it moves out. Now that's the wind gusts. Now let me go over. I got it loaded up already for you. The impact winds. So you can see exactly uh, what's going to happen on impact. Okay, now these are your 10 meter winds. These are the winds that make up everything of the damage to the name of the storm. It depends what it is. And as you can see, the Zeta 
Well, the 20 seconds starts getting strong, starts getting some white in there. That's just, just you can see the intensity chart on the top. The white is where you get to the tropical depression. And so does Epsilon as well. That's why I said whichever one forms first uh, will be the ones to be the names. So the names could be the opposite direction, guys. And uh, according to this one, it looks like Epsilon gets it first. Okay, bright white is all in the 40s. And then Zeta gets a spark right there. I guarantee that spark is Tropical Storm. That's Tropical Depression. While wow, this is in the 50s, it starts growing. So let's go over Zeta real quick so you can see it. And then we'll go over Epsilon. Stays a Tropical Storm. It gets... Stays a tropical depression. That's good. The winds are are, are very strong winds, though. But the, but the intensity chart is only tropical depression. Had a little spike of orange right there. That could have been a tropical storm uh, intensity. Yeah, it's in the 40s. And then it moves away without going on land anywhere. Now we go back down towards Epsilon to see what the, the impacts are from this. And this is where it's passing by Jamaica. This is where you get your tropical storm strength, just the bright white. Then it starts building and going over Cuba. Once again, I can't see uh, Cayman Islands, but I'm I'm guessing from geographically, it could be anywhere from a strong tropical storm strength winds, uh, also to a slight edge of low hurricane. Now it heads out over Cuba. It's a strong it's a strong hurricane at this point I mean you can see the colors I think even a little green popped up right here just a second ago but it's already powerful enough then it starts moving uh, towards the Bahamas and Florida now this is on the 24th at 10 p.m. let's see what that spark is Might be a little more other than that, but that's bad enough. It's already 82, 83. It's already hurricane strength. Uh, and over here is in the 20s. The white is the tropical storm conditions. Just so, just so y'all know, as it's going by, you can see what you're looking at. Any orange uh, like that right there is 50s and 60s, real strong. The yellows is the hurricanes. The greens is really strong, almost cat two. Bring that back just a little bit. It looks like you do get some tropical storm winds on the coast. West Palm, Coral Springs. Y'all be aware of that. Tropical storm edge. So it's very much on the edge. And I hope this don't do no damage for anybody. And if it don't, I tell you, it will be a, a sight to see offshore. See that's a big thing passing by. At the same time, it'd be scary. So now you even get some greens on that one. That's that's good intensity it's getting strength and that's from the, the circulation that's over the Bahamas I can't get it stopped on it I'll get it hold on I'm do I slow it down just a second give it some more frames to work with we got to see what that's going to be Come on, we want to know what you are. There, that's good enough. It gets more intense than this, <laughs> but we can tell the probability of what it's going to be around. That's 99. It's already more powerful than we want it to be anyway. It's a big system. And then it's going to move by, to go right up the east coast, and it's going to cause all that snowfall that you saw in the pre precipitation as well. And you got some green on that one as well so it is 93 94 and i guarantee it's going to be stronger than that because we didn't get the full thing but this is going to change as well so just want to give you a roundabout what we got to look forward to so it looks like we are going to have two systems and two problems uh, let me put it in fast for you i like doing that i'm sure some of you like it as well it's it's a pretty good way of seeing everything in motion God, God bless everybody this evening. I hope everybody has a, a, a great evening. I hope everybody had a great day today, despite this potential that we have moving forward. 
I'd like to share a little something with you, which which is a big part of my heart, which should be everybody's heart, is Jesus, of course. Amen. Matthew 14. At that time, Herod and Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do shew forth themselves in him. For Herod had hold on John and bound him and put him in prison in Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have, have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake. And them with, with which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And the head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciple came and took up the body and buried it, and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and was moved with, with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is, the time is now past. Send the multitude away, and they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking upon the heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they, and they that had eaten were about five thousand men, besides women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship, and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And then in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, and in the wind seas, they went. Sorry, then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. And when they were gone gone over, they come into the land of Genesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched were made perfectly whole amen so god bless you all today i hope you have a, a great evening and if, you, if it's another day I hope you're having a great day all glory does go to god amen uh, do me a favor, guys. Share the new information with everybody else. It does help out a lot. It gets gets the word out. Leave a like for me. Love you too. Amen. God bless. <laughs>